computers then and now the basic ideas of computing and calculating are very old, going back thousands of years. However, the computer in the form in which it is recognized today is a fairly recent invention. In fact, personal computers have only been around since the late 1970s. The history of computers is often referred to in terms of generations, with each new generation characterized by a major technological development. The next section summarize some early calculating devices and the different computer generations. Pre-computers and early computers, before approximately 1946, based on archaeological finds, such as notched bones, knotted twine, and hieroglyph ICS, experts have concluded that ancient civilizations had the ability to count and compute. The abacus is considered by many to be the earliest recorded calculating device, it was used primarily as an aid for basic arithmetic calculations. Other early computing devices include the slide rule, the mechanical calculator, and Dr. Herman Hollerith's punch card tabulating machine and sorter. This latter device, see figure 1 to 7, was the first electromechanical machine that could read punch cards special cards with holes punched in them to represent data. Hollerith's machine was used to process the 1890 U.S. Census data and it was able to complete the task in two and one half years, instead of the decade it usually took to process the data manually. Consequently, this is considered to be the first successful case of an information processing system replacing a paper and pen based system. Hollerith's company eventually became International Business Machines, IBM. First generation computers, approximately 1946 to 1957, the first computers were enormous, often taking up entire rooms. They were powered by thousands of vacuum tubes glass tubes that look similar to large light bulbs which needed replacing constantly, required a great deal of electricity, and generated a lot of heat. First generation computers could solve only one problem at a time because they needed to be physically rewired with cables to be reprogrammed, see figure 1 to 7, which typically took several days, sometimes even weeks, to complete and several more days to check before Rob Bredo, CTO, cards and paper tape were used for input, and output was printed on paper. Two of the most significant examples of first generation computers were ENIAC and UNIVAC. ENIAC, shown in figure 1 to 7, was the world's first large-scale, general-purpose computer. Although it was not completed until 1946, ENIAC was developed during World War II to compute artillery firing tables for the U.S. Army. Instead of the 40 hours required for a person to compute the optimal settings for a single weapon under a single set of conditions using manual calculations, NIAC could complete the same calculations in less than two minutes. UNIVAC, released in 1951, was initially built for the U.S. Census Bureau and was used to analyze votes in the 1952 U.S. presidential election. Interestingly, its correct prediction of an Eisenhower victory only 45 minutes after the polls closed was not publicly aired because the results were not trusted. However, UNIVAC became the first computer to be mass-produced for general commercial use. Second-generation computers, approximately 1958 to 1963, the second generation of computers began when the transistor a small device made of semiconductor material that acts like a switch to open or close electronic CIR quits started to replace the vacuum tube. Transistors allowed second-generation computers to be smaller, less expensive, more powerful, more energy-efficient, and more reliable than first-generation computers. Typically, programs and data were input on punch cards and magnetic tape, output was on punch cards and paper printouts, and magnetic tape, see figure 1 to 7, was used for storage. Hard drives and programming languages, such as Fortran and COBOL, were developed and implemented during this generation. Third generation computers, approximately 1964 to 1970, the replacement of the transistor. With integrated circuits, ICS, 
marked the beginning of the third generation of computers. Integrated circuits incorporate many transistors and electronic circuits on a single tiny silicon chip, allowing third generation computers to be even smaller and more reliable than computers in the earlier computer generations. Instead of punch cards and paper printouts, keyboards and monitors were introduced for input and output, 